Welcome to Empowered. I'm Elizabeth Namofsky. Are women better or worse investors than men? And what is the wealth gap and how does it affect us? And what about the wage gap? Is it hurting women? And what about pink tax? Today's guest has a mission to empower women to confidently and profitably grow their wealth through financial feminism. Today, I'm joined by Janine Rogan, a chartered professional accountant and author of The Pink Tax, Dismantling a Financial System Designed to Keep Women Broke. And she's also CEO of the Wealth Building Academy. Janine, welcome to Empowered. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for our conversation today. I am as well. And I have to ask you, uh, I want to begin with the name of your book, The Pink Tax. On the cover, mm-hmm. the subline is dismantling a financial system designed to keep women broke. This is a very par- powerful statement, and I think it's true. And however, I'm just wondering, you know, how have people responded to you about this? Yeah, I think there's always going to be two camps of people. So most people have been very supportive and understand the impact of you know, the systemic issues that impact women's bank accounts. But of course, there's always going to be some detractors around uh, believing that the wage gap or the wealth gap isn't real or or that I'm making up statistics, even though, you know, there's over 200 sources in the book. So usually those people, though, are not my target audience. Um, hopefully one day I'll change their minds. But I would say overall, it's been really positive. So as you know, the show is educational. So I want to go through a few different phrases with you. Let's begin with what is the wealth gap? Yeah, the wealth gap really looks at the discrepancy in wealth between two groups of people. So this could be a gendered wealth gap. So between men and women, how much wealth men have versus women. And we know that um, white women have just 30% of the worldwide wealth compared to uh, white men. And it can also be intersectional. So you may have uh, a gendered wealth gap that also looks at people of color. So people of color have just 2% of the worldwide wealth. And this can be sliced and diced a, a whole bunch of different ways. It could be millennials versus baby boomers. Um, You name it, you can kind of look at the wealth gap from a variety of different lenses. So I want to talk about wealth. When women have wealth, what can they actually do with it? Yeah, wealth is power at the end of the day. And I think that that's something that we need to remind ourselves of more often. So when I'm talking about power, though, I mean like power to impact change in our community, in our governments, um, power and impact to invest in women-led businesses, if that's something that you're interested in, or even just to be able to purchase from small businesses that you care about. Sometimes those products can be more expensive, but if you have wealth, you have the power to do those things. And so we're going to go back to another term, the wage gap. What is the wage Mm -hmm. gap? Yeah, the wage gap talks about the difference that um, people are paid for uh, their work that they do. So we know that, again, white women earn just 83, 84 cents on the dollar compared to white men. And then women of color, it's just 62 cents. And again, any intersectionality we add, we know that that wage gap gets bigger. You know, it's really interesting because this has been happening forever. And yes. I'm surprised that we haven't caught up to, you know, 2023 where, you know, wages are equal for e- equal pay for equal work. I mean, this is what we've been talking about for a very long time. Um, it doesn't seem to be closing anytime soon. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that like, I feel like I'm battling the same things that my my mom's generation battled. Um, But I think it won't change until we create laws and policies to do that, because I don't think there are enough companies that are going to do it out of the goodness of their heart. Um, There are countries around the world that are doing really great things. Iceland, for example, mandates that country or companies, pardon me, have to include their wage gap data in their kind of financial reporting. And if they don't, they're actually fined daily. So creating you know, fines or legislative requirements is one way that we can absolutely look to starting to close that wage gap. But yeah, I don't think it's going to close just out of the goodness of anybody's heart. You know, it's funny that you brought up your mother. I I was uh, doing a speech. I was saying a speech at one point, and I was saying that, you know, my mother had to struggle with lower wages. My mother had to struggle with not having childcare. Um, and the only difference from then to now is that, you know, she was washing diapers and now you you can just buy them and we didn't have cell phones. So we're going to keep talking about the wage gap. So please don't go away. 
We'll be right back with Janine Rogan.